Welcome to this video on one of the most powerful tools at our disposal in the mathematics classroom, the double-sided counter. It's not my intention to cover absolutely everything that a double-sided counter can be utilized to support with, but it is my intention to cover the things that I find most powerful when teaching mathematics to children aged between five and 11. If we use double-sided counters in the same way that we use regular monotone counters, then we're not utilizing the full power that they possess. You know, I think in the primary mathematics classroom, certainly, color is one of our most powerful allies. And it's a dimension of possible variation that we can utilize when using double-sided counters to support us in representing various structures the whole way through the primary phase. You know, for instance, you see here, We've got five um, blue counters, sure cardinality, order of relevance, the, the fundamental principles of counting. You know, we could easily represent those using a monotone counter. But if we wanted to draw attention to the part-hole relationships and those bonds that are so essential for our pupils to internalize, then we need to think about well, how can we use these double-sided counters to, to represent that. So you see here, if I were just to change over. The contrast couldn't be more stark. You know, five is a three and a two, you know, or a two and a three, you know, and then with a quick change, five is also four and one. You know, it's so much more than a collection of five objects. And this is the direction we want our pupils to, to travel because if they internalize these ideas, then the rest of mathematics and arithmetic in particular become a whole lot more accessible. And it may be the case that somewhere down the line you might use the double-sided counters. You know, you're showing these part-hole relationships, but equally you could show the commutativity that exists as an additive property. And um, you know, so five is a one and a four, but it's also four and one. And so you're showing that that order doesn't necessarily make a difference when you are adding to make a total. So if we wanted to give this context, say we want our pupils to be solving problems, we could say something along the lines of Sam has five sweets and she gives her brother two sweets. How we approach this will depend on where we want our point of ingress to be. But if we're using part whole relationships as our way to solve this problem, as our approach, as our strategy, then we very quickly go, okay, well, she has five. Those two blue are the two she gives to her brother. And we can see immediately, you know, we can subitize this, that Sam has three left. She has three more, she's still got three sweets, you know? Um, and so what we're doing is we are identifying the strategy that we want the pupils to use, and we're giving them the tool to help them do so. And then hopefully over time, they'll make the connection with those bonds that they're internalizing, and we'll be able to do this reasonably mentally, reasonably fluently. If we then look at 10, having internalized that five, utilizing five frames, 10 frames, we can see here the bonds to 10. So we start with those smaller numbers. The example I used was five, but it doesn't need to be. It could be anything because the contrast will exist between those amounts, between those values, between those colored counters, that we can take the idea and we can extend it. Um, and so here in this example, we have got one to 10, where we have nine red, and we have one blue, or it's five red, four red, and one blue. And so we're looking at how that and the composition is constructed and, and asking the pupils to internalize the ideas. And you're giving them something to think about when they want to process this mentally, because ultimately we want them to have this at their, at their fingertips when they're thinking about more difficult mathematics. You know, and this is some of the most difficult mathematics to teach because it is so important. And I think with double-sided counters, we can make those really complex and abstract concepts, really concrete and uh, like a, a firm foundation for the pupils to, to build on. 
Now, where I think this falls down, and I'm going to show it because it's just too much to do with counters. You know, this falls down here because I think we've almost got far too much going on. I mean, you make that judgment where actually I think with 10, the pupils are able to hold a lot of information. They may, I, I'm not saying they definitely won't, but for me, this is a step too far. You know, by this point, actually, they will have internalized the, the structure so well that actually this, this is a bit of a redundant model in my opinion, you know, I'm working with pupils who are exploring these ideas, you know, exploring those bonds to 20. And um, it's just an extension of what they've already internalized rather than needed to do it like this. Because if you've got it like this, it'll probably end up being used as a calculator, um, which is definitely not the point. And so those examples are examples that are taken primarily from the early part of the primary phase, you know, the first two, two and a bit years. Um, and they're some of the most fundamental concepts that our pupils can get to grips with. And like I said, if they do, and if they internalize these models, then the rest of mathematics becomes much more easily accessible. Okay. But if we wanted to take it, this same tool into the sort of later end of primary, you know, the final four years in England, then we could use it to represent those proportional um, relationships, you know, the, um, the different ways we can express fractions and the idea of a fraction. So when we think about proportional relationships, fractions, and the different ideas that our pupils are expected to come to terms with across the later part of the primary phase, um, then I think it's really important that we think about things in terms of the whole. And so I find it's useful we don't necessarily need to quantify the whole immediately and um, because then we can think more abstractly about what is happening. So here you can see we've demarcated the whole. There are five parts representing that whole, one, two, three, four, five. And one of those five parts is red. And so when we're talking to the pupils, we're talking about, okay, so one of those five parts is red. At the same time, that means that four of the five parts is blue. And obviously you wouldn't necessarily encounter unit fractions and non-unit fractions in the same lesson, but it's my idea here that we're spending as little time as possible, but exploring as much of the important sort of facets as we possibly can. So we, we might decide that we want to explore the addition of fractions. And again, within this context of the whole, that's really sort of easy to do because we're, we're sitting here and we're looking, okay, so here's one of five parts. And say we were adding another two of five parts. So here you've got two of five parts. And you may want to remove this, the understanding being that the whole is still defined as having five parts. I think the five frame is really useful in this situation. But whether or not you know you could choose to use circles to represent that there was something there, but we've got one of five parts added to two of five parts, and you can see very easily that we've got three of five parts. And so, as long as we're thinking in that context of the whole, we can make this really clear. One of the probably the most powerful thing that you can do with double-sided counters is show the relationship between ratio and proportion. Okay, so we're, we're, I think we're very, very good at exploring fractions, but it can often be very late in secondary school when pupils start to realize the connection between ratio and proportion. So for every egg, you've got four, let's say cups of flour. What we can see is that not only is this a ratio of one to four, but we can also see that in terms of the whole, well, there are five parts in the whole. So we can also see that that is one of five parts and four of five parts. And so 
where it wouldn't immediately appeal to our like standard that what we need to do is we need to use the idea of the whole. In this instance, when we're using double-sided counters, it's much more easily possible to do that. Okay. So I think there are something in the region of 14 different times that we can use double-sided counters to good effect. Um, and a lot of them are the next step on, you know, like in the example with the bonds to five and then the bonds to 10, you know, it's, it's essentially the same idea, but an extension, an important extension. And so you'll find that, but I think 14 different times, certainly in the English national curriculum, um, with two main strands, additive reasoning, and then proportional relationships and ratio. Okay. 